Hi guys and welcome to my sick YouTube tutorial. Um, today we're going to go through some um, Android processing as well as texturing um, the cube which we made last time. Um, I think the code was something similar to this. I just quickly drew it up again. But yeah, this time we're going to go through a bit of texturing. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is start off by... Oh, there we go. Um, the first thing we need to do is start off by um, creating a new P image. So I'm going to do that at the top. Um, just call it and let's call it texture. No, it's a keyword. Let's call it text. Text. No, text is obviously a keyword. To call it tx. Tx. Okay, so we've got an EPM. We should call it tx. So let's go to the setup. Tx equals load image. So what we're going to do is load an image, which will be this particular p image, and that image. I put one in here a minute ago. Um, dice. There you go. It's called dice dot bitmap bmp. So load image dice dot bmp. So now we I've called it text, haven't I? <laughs> T E X equals load image dice bmp. I don't know why it's called a dice. Funnily enough, because it's not a dice, is it? <laughs> That's a Rubik's cube of, of some sort. Okay. Anyway, um, well, that's that's the goal for today. Anyway, we're going to make it look like a Rubik's cube. Um, the other thing we need to do is specify a texture mode. Um, to make it easy and understandable, I'm going to stick it on normalized today, so it doesn't hurt your brains as much. Um, I remember I used to struggle um, with getting the coordinates correct, so normalized mode is a lot easier to work with. Um, Stick the field to 255 as well, and we'll keep the stroke at 255. I think that'd be alright. Um, I mean, at the moment, let me just take off fill for the minute. I'll show you what we got at the moment. This is what we got at the moment. I can't find dice.bmp. Maybe um, I need to change the extension. Maybe it's a, all capitals or something. Um, if you see, this is similar to what we made last time. I just changed the fill color and the opacity. Um, just down here we got the fill, 180 points in red, 0 and 0 in green and blue, which just makes it a dark-ish red colour. Um, a nicer red colour, I should say. <laughs> um, 127 into the opacity, which makes it semi see -through. Um And of course, on translate, I've also translated to mouse X and mouse Y. And remember, we have to call that in push matrix and pop matrix. I definitely explained all of this in the last tutorial, so if you're confused so far, I suggest going back to my last tutorial and having a look in that looking at having a look at that before going on to this one. Okay, so we've got our push matrix and pop matrix doing all the moving. Uh we got our lights for atmosphere. Our background remember that that continuously draws and anything drawn after that will overlay it. Like I mentioned in one of my early tutorials as well, like like a pile of books. Um like a collage, a similar concept to that. Okay, so now that we've got that and that's all loaded, in the size I've specified that it's 3D, so OpenGL there. Create a new method, and I'm going to call it um, texture the cube. Well, it's not really texture in the cube because it will be creating the cube at the same time, so we're going to call it um let's just call it textured cube. This is um similar to one of the processing examples as well, so you should have a look at that too. Okay. Um if we begin the shape begin the shape quads because quadrilateral texture and our texture is gonna be not text, I'll keep writing that. T T X, which we've just loaded up here. TX equals load image dice dot BMP. Okay, so we're not going to be drawing a box like that anymore. We're going to be using something else. So, what we need to do is create some vertices um, using um, using our normalized mode. So, what we're doing is we're going to be using these coordinates, which we're going to be creating just now, to um, specify the position in which each part of the image will be going. 
this so I'll just write it out and then I'll explain. So like that. So what I've done, I've I'm beginning the shape quads and then I'm putting in a texture for the shape and the texture we're loading is text up here and the vert um, we're using some vertex to create a side so this side for example will be the front face and um, these represent the uh, the coordinates for the shape so the next one will be the back face Okay, so the best way for me to show you what all of this I just wrote out means is to actually just open the wiki and explain it that way. So we've got five variables there, all ones, minus ones, or zeros. Okay, so with a, um, a vertex drawing with an X and a Y, it's just a point on a, a coordinate system that only has an X and a Y. Now it's got an x, y and a z, then it's a point on a coordinate system for the x position, the y position and the z position. So let me just, um, I think I've done this before, but let me do it again. I'm just going to open Photoshop and just um, draw out the coordinate system for you. So, oh, let's go to 200 by 200, create that. Okay, so now that's open. Brilliant. Let's uh, zoom in a bit. Okay. So if I create a coordinate system, like that, there's our depth, that's our Z, that's our Y, that's our X. Uh, Z, Y, X. So we have three, um, so on our vertex, oh, that's some really bad handwriting from me there. <laughs> you have, uh, your x, y, and z coordinate references. So if it's 1 for example, or minus 1, it's, it's going to be like like here and here. Um, you also have two other references um, for your texturing, which is the two references that make it, um, which make it five variables and um, they're again used for texturing on certain coordinates of the image kind of like pinning up a poster so <laughs> um, let me just show you that okay so here you've got these three coordinates here so x, y and z I have to zoom in on that a bit, there we go three coordinates here your x, y and z coordinates and then here you've got this one 
it looks like, yeah, there you go, you've got your UMV parameters to map it directly to the vertex points. So, this one's just, by the looks of it, got X and Y positions. Um, and then it's parameters for mapping it. So it's saying map it to 0, 0 for the first corner, map it to 100, 0 for the second corner, so that's 100 on the X, 0 on the Y. And then um, for the third corner is 100, 100, bottom right, and the fourth corner is 0, 100, bottom left. Do you, does that um, sound familiar? Pretty sure I did something like that in one of my previous tutorials. Um, explain something similar to this. Something to do with begin shape and end shape as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, the only real difference is your UMV coordinate points now. Um, and that is what t uh, makes a difference to texture it really, them UMV coordinate points. So, if we go back to um, our drawing, now that I've explained what all of all of them coordinates are for, you see it's m 1 and minus 1 as well because it's normalised, so it just takes the, the, the width and the height of whatever you're um, texturing and uses that for example. Or it, um, it has a scale, so it just has a width and height of 1 and, and the scale is um, whatever you want to set it to, scales, up, scales it up as much as you want basically. So that's what we're going to start playing with. Um, so, end the drawing of the shape. We got another one up here. Begin the drawing of the shape. There you go. So that's just to draw the shape. Fantastic. And I think that's actually it. Funnily enough. That's all we need, really. Um, oh, of course, we need to pass in our image as well. Oh, well, don't have to, but we probably should. Okay. Just in case we pull it from somewhere else in future, right? Um, but this is exactly this this bit here, and a few bits up here, are exactly what the um, tutorial has. The difference is, is that we're going to be converting this to an Android app in this tutorial, which um, is going to be really fun for you guys with Android phones. So, um, but this is how it goes anyway. I'm going to run this. Um, okay, so in our data folder, we've got this picture one dot jpeg. Our textured cube needs to be imported into the uh, draw method. Extra cube text and on top of that we need to stick on a scale like I was mentioning before so we're going to scale it up to let's try about 40 and I stick it in the uh, push and pop matrix as well there we go so we've got a nice flower cube now and now what we're going to do is convert it to an Android app so I should save the sketch switch it to Android mode. It should be in most of the latest versions of uh, processing. So in Android mode there's a few differences you need to know. The first difference is the size. You can't specify a size because it's always going to be the screen width and height of the Android device that you're switching to. So if you do specify a size, you specify it screen height, screen, oops, sorry, screen width, by screen height and then you want to specify your um, renderer and we're going to be using A3D but you can specify OpenGL as well just the uh, pre-processor takes care of all the changes it needs to make because we can't use texture mode normalized in um, Android what I'm actually going to do is remove texture mode for a minute I'll come back to it in a later tutorial because I think that will be uh, quite advanced um, quite an advanced tutorial to go through. So I'm just going to take off all the textures and get rid of the uh, image for the minute. Okay, and where we're using all of that, well, we don't need that anymore. Delete that. We're literally just going to put back in box. Okay, so at the moment, as you can see, um, the box is just sitting in the corner. Um, as it's not based upon the accelerometer 
it's not going to move. So what we need to do is just make sure that everything's right in the code. Um, Because we're, I've, I've made this mistake before, haven't I? <laughs> Need to put the box after the translate. <laughs> okay, so let's try that again. Build the Android project. Install the sketch on the device. And again, we got it in the corner. But this time, as we move our hand about, we can move the box with us. Pretty cool way. Eh? We can move the box around. There's one other little trick I want to show you guys um, in Android processing, and that's the accelerometer. But I don't want to make this tutorial too long, so I'll put that in the next tutorial. Um, it's pretty damn cool. So it's literally just following mouse X and mouse Y. And mouse X and mouse Y is the uh, the screen's uh, the last place you touched on, on the screen. That's how it works with um, Android processing. It's actually another game that I made, which I'll just quickly show you. Um, I don't want to make the tutorial go on for too long. This game here. Is it going to load? Yeah, there you go. Oh, it's upside down. This is made entirely in processing. There's a little bit of motivation for you here. You can move around using the accelerometer. You can fire spells using this. And you can do a whole lot more. Um, but if you want to see that, just check out my other videos. I'm got, I've got a ton of the videos of it. So, okay. Um, anyway, back to the code. Yeah, looking back at the code now, you can see that um, all we've really done is this is literally all it is, and we've <laughs> made an application that you can move around with your finger. You just drag, drag around a, um, a cube. Which, although not that inventive, um, only took us what about 20 lines of code. Not even that. The only the main thing you need to remember is switching this bit here, the screen width and height and A3D. Make sure you don't use accidentally use screen dot width or anything like that, um, or don't use um, width and height. You've got to use screen width and height. Because if you use width and height, it's the wrong type of width, so it doesn't quite work. Um, and that's it really that's how you make a Android application within processing so I'll see you next time um, next time we'll be playing around with more Android applications but we'll um, be using the accelerometer and playing around with that and seeing how that goes I'll see you guys next time